right time. Then he's come back in with his combinations. Navarrete is actually lunging forward mm -hmm. when he throws. He's actually smothering his punches. Navarrete then comes in with an offensive surge here in the final minute of round number one, overhand right hand against the champion. And he wants to be the first one to do it. Chopping down with the right hand after that exchange, trying to come in with that sweeping left hand against the shorter man. There's that uppercut, triples up that left hand. And Dog Bay backed up here in round number two. Dog Bay is hurt from that body shot or left hook to the body. That's why he's holding. Now charging in, throws a right uppercut. Sweeping left hand, another body shot comes in from the challenger. This is a big round from Emmanuel Neverette. Continued pace and work rate here. Final minute of round two. Good right hand behind that jab. Dog Bay looking like he's saying, what, why can't he stop this? He's trying to take the heart of Dog Bay by going down to his body and take the legs and the steam out of his punches. Navarrete right now don't seem phased by Dog Bay's punching power. Wow, sweeping left hand from far away. Dog Bay is hurt from that left. And again, a left hook comes in against the champion. Navarrete swinging for the fences here with a minute to go in round number three, and twice he landed. The champ is in serious trouble here. An uppercut lands from Neverete. Four punch combination that finished with a left to the body. Dog Bay backed up and it happened late. There was that glimmer of hope from the champion in the middle rounds. But since then, look what the Mexican challenger continues to do. He is closing in on becoming a new world champion here in New York of Isaac Dog Bay. And Navarrete continues to pour it on here. Final 30 seconds. And another one as Navarrete pulls out. Ooh. Navarrete with the overhand right forward by the left. A left-handed uppercut. A right hook from Navarrete. Uppercut, right hook. Oh, he hurt him, he hurt him. Dog, Dog Bay on the ropes. Navarrete with the uppercut goes to the body. Navarrete charges, a big overhand right out of the clinch. Left uppercut. Dog Bay is on his heels, nearly held up by the ropes. Navarrete with the oh. right hook. Dog Bay a counter right of his own. One and a half minutes to go in the final round of a dominate team performance by Emmanuel Navarrete. He hurt his, I think he really hurt his right hand. Oh. Now Dog Bay oh. held up by the ropes. And Dog Bay goes down for the second time in this fight. Do we know? He, he did hurt his, his, he, his right hand had been bothering him. Yeah, bothered see. him in the first fight, and he's shaking it out right now. Fortunately for him, there's one minute left oh, in this fight. fight. And, and Dog Bay's good corner yeah. throws in the tower. Emmanuel Navarrete erases any doubt. There's a lot going wrong for the, for the young fighter early in this fight. It's only the second round. Navarrete is a volume puncher with a 75-inch oh. reach. Down goes De Vaca here in round two of his world title Cinco. challenge. Cinco. Round number two. Look at it. You know what? De Vaca right there is just sitting, both hands straight up in the middle. What do you do when a guy has his hands straight up in the middle? You split the guard with uppercuts. Two uppercuts. It's, you know, that's an awkward combination right there. Two uppercuts back to back. With the a right short overhand right left. hand that dropped De Vaca right where he stood. My goodness. Beautiful short Beautiful right by short the right hand. Navarrete. But to start it with two uppercuts, Dre? What we saw from DeVaca early in the round was his last Let's stand. Navarrete answered him, and now it's getting real ugly for DeVaca. And he squared up, Dre. Somebody need to save this young man. He gonna get hurt. It won't be DeVaca. long. It won't be long. Manny Robles is looking in. Man. He's not gonna let his guy take too much punishment, but... That body shot hurt DeVaca right there. Mm -hmm. Right back to the head. From Neverete. It's pick your poison time. Listen, it's unnecessary punishment right now. And the reason why the ref is not stopping in and stepping the action Stop. is That's because it. Debaca That's is cool. fighting back. And he That's finally cool. decides to step in and stop this action. But Neverete is right where he wants to be. He knows he's got his opponent. Yielding. It's just, just about on time, like I said. Neverete was in his zone. He got warmed up. 
and he's a whirlwind, and he let those punches go. And Devaka just took a lot of punches. He probably had, a, he probably took about 30 or 40 uh, shots. He didn't really land anything. That's a lot of punishment for only three rounds of fighting from Devaka. Yes, it is. A lot nose of punishment. Bleeding. Yep, nose bleeding. And you see, it's not pretty. What we see from Navarrete is not pretty at all. I like but it. But it's effective. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's effective. He's I mean, long. This game is about getting dangerous. your hand raised, winning belts, defending belts for as long as you yeah. can, making as much money as you can, and getting out with your faculties intact. And Navarrete, if he stays the course, hopefully he's on his way to doing that. Coming out to try now. Oh. At least establish himself. Oh. It lands a short right hand. So at least the challenger's willing. Yeah, but he's going to get disciplined for that willingness. Trust <laughs> me. Acting oh. like a fighter, though, isn't he? That's, That's it. Yes. It's over. TKO victory. Emmanuel Navarrete. Nice stoppage by the ref. Hooked that miss, but he's always coming back with something else. That sweeping right hand hurt. Alorde and great stoppage from the referee. One or two more punches, and things could have really got ugly for Alorde. It's a great stoppage from the great referee. Stoppage. Right on time. Alorde right here is attacking. Gets hit, standing straight up on the ropes right now. Too much firepower. Uh, too, wait, coming from all different angles too, Dre. The arsenal's too vast. It's too much to deal with if you're a Lordy. And look, and, and look how Navarrete, how he threw the left hook, came back on the right foot. Here he, there he is, boom. Then the sweeping right hook. But that's the thing with a volume puncher. He'll right. miss, but he's always coming back coming with something back with else. Something he's else. not, a, he's uh, not economical with his punches. He's volume, volume, volume. There he is. Ortha thought he was safe out at distance. Came along the ropes, so what did Navarrete do? <laughs> He's kept. Oh, nice left, left hook. hook. Look at those shots. And you see Orta just taking a step back as Navarrete switches from orthodox to southpaw to whatever gets caught in the middle and still is able to land from a distance. See the hooks coming in from the right and left hand of Navarrete. He's got his opponent pinned on the ropes, and that's the last place you want to be against Emmanuel Navarrete. But look how those punches, they're coming from odd angles. They're coming around the outside, then up the middle, then back around the outside, then straight. You see the right. body language, too, of Panchito Orta changing. He's got him up against the corner, and this is where Emmanuel Navarrete does his best work. And you can hear the crowd appreciating, although Orta lands a nice counter right. Navarrete, he's he's okay with getting hit with those shots because those shots are not hard at all coming from Orta. Just so he can get in position to land his punches. His power punches. Look at how he sits down on these shots. He's looking for to land a well-placed shot. Here he is, just just landing a barrage of punches and then the follow-up nice. <laughs> the right hook from Navarrete, and here comes another barrage as the blood begins to flow once again from the Good. nose of Panchito Orta, who takes a body shot. He's very valiant, but we saw what happened with another valiant fighter in Miguel Gonzalez, who wasn't throwing punches and was taking punishment. And here it comes to an end once again. And Manuel Navarrete with a big knockout of Panchito Orta in his fourth title defense, the first time he does it on home soil. And Navarrete continues to impress. Power shots. And it was a body shot in. that prompted Roberto Ramirez Jr. to stop the fight because no. that's the wins. The combination here at the end of round number three. Another left hand from Navarrete. Trying to target the right hand, and he does. And the wrap on that right hand, Andy Lee, who was monitoring the wrapping of Wilder's right hand for Team Fury. Whoa. No objection, and look at Santissima as he comes forward here in round four against the world champion Navarrete. Raid of Navarrete that has been controlling the action as he lunges ahead with a series of go, right hands. Turns southpaw for a now. moment. That day has thrown 375 punches, and now he's landed 120. Opened up that time, and filling the spot was a left hook from the Filipino Santissima, and it doesn't even stop Navarrete at all. He just keeps punching. Wide-ranging right hand, and now Navarrete is on the attack here in round number five. He is backing up Santissima. Navarrete clubbing, touching him time and again. Left uppercut, right uppercut. Body shot comes in. Look for that left hook to the body. 
Santissima has taken the head shots pretty well, but the shot he hasn't taken well is the left hook to the liver from Navarrete. This is great work right here of the volume punching attack and the aggression of Emmanuel Navarrete. He is a fan friendly fighter. Also a sharp dresser. Is he ever? Coming to the end of round number seven, and that affords us the opportunity to go up to Brian Kenny and the guys. Canelo has 36. Here we are in round number eight. Larry Hazard Sr. has 59 to 55 in favor of Emmanuel Navarrete. Santissima's, you know, he's receiving these shots, he's blocking them, but he's not answering. He's not coming back with his own shots, which he should. You see him going southpaw, so the right hand is now his lead jab hand. As he turns southpaw, goes back to orthodox, of course, and gets a combination. He has been switching stances a bit here. Yeah, and now a combination on the inside, and you can see the tape is actually loose on Santissima. Some good work here in round number 10 by Navarrete. Into the body. Headshots are good, but he, he needs to finish downstairs with that left hook to the body, just like that. Look at this attack by Navarrete, and every so often Santissima is trying to place a punch between punches, but it has been a tidal wave of offense here in round number 10 all of a sudden from Navarrete. Look a few seconds ago, hurt Santissima. Yeah, he's still squinting from it. And Navarrete sees Santissima affected. You can tell, yeah. and there's a headshot, Santissima. He is compromised yeah, here in round number 11. Navarrete on the charge. Trying to place a short uppercut on the inside. Combination punching upstairs. Uppercut body shot the left hand. Runs to him to close the gap. Can he close the show here in style? Round number 11. Trying to defend his title one more time. Santissima is so game. He actually ducked through the blue and white rope for a moment there. Strafing attack to the head. Coming down and wrapping up a Santissima back from the Mexican world champion. And the, ref and the referee is very close to the... Uh -oh. Stop! And now tying up so no, no, awkwardly no. that Give he throws up. Navarrete into that top rope. Clearly damaged is Santissimo. Can Navarrete finish things off here in round number 11? Russell Morris giving yes. it a look. There it is. TKO victory. Emmanuel Navarrete. Oh, that's discouraging. That drains you. And then Every the end of the fight, Lennox. Yeah. Uh, Navarrete just, it's just a volume of punches. Also, it's a scheduled 10 round. This is Navarrete so we're talking about. Worry about the championship round. Yes, segundo. It's Navarrete we're talking about. War. He's definitely in shape. Junior featherweight champion Emmanuel Navarrete stepping up to 126 pounds against Uriel Lopez. And Navarrete starting to heat up here in round number six after dropping Lopez to the body in the fifth round. Navarrete. Mm. Navarrete wants to end this match right now. That's why you see him to step up the tempo, turn it up on Lopez. He hurt him with that body shot. Vicious. Yep, vicious shots to the body from Navarrete. You can see Lopez now breathing through the mouth and just taking shot after shot. The referee takes a close look at him. Oh, he's done. This is a Navarrete buzzsaw he's that done. we were used to. Take the shots, he's trying to hang in there, but he won't be able to hang in there much longer, especially when that one good shot gets through. And Navarrete's been landing that straight right to the gut. Right to the solar plexus. And trying to come around with the left to the body. Mm -hmm. I was trying to be fancier about it, Dre, but you said it, to the gut. Right on the Kenya, right there. Boom, mm. right above that. And here comes the oh flurry. And Lopez is in trouble once again. Referee now, I'm putting put in work here. Mm. Mm. Look, at the, look at the combinations coming from every angle. Every angle from underneath over the top. The way the head is snapping back. No touching gloves here, Tim. The there he goes, goes down once again. Fight's over. You expected? What is it, Vintage Navarrete? Just placing his shots. Beautiful shot right there to the gut, to the solar plex. That was the setup shot. He didn't throw that by accident. He wasted a shot right there, wasted a shot to the head, and said, Oh, that's the shot that I want. And down goes Lopez. Listen, when it looks this easy, it just means 
you're on another level. Navarrete is fighting, is not fighting at his full potential, ladies and gentlemen. He's placing his punches here. The adjustment from Navarrete already. Starting to get a little frustrated, so he's trying to change the rhythm up with his punches. Oh! oh! And the uppercut scores the knockdown here in round one. In no time, take us through it, Tim. Look, Navarrete, he throws punches at the oddest angles. It looked like he was getting ready to load up for a left hook, but he brought it underneath, surprising Villa with this shot. Villa never saw that punch. Okay. I, understand, I understand that. He don't mind missing shots. If Villa doesn't do something to make him think twice about missing shots and falling over, there it is. There it is. Second knockdown scored. It comes here oh. in round four. Five. The Land that hard jab. Emmanuel Navarrete putting on an offensive show back here at the MGM Grand. Let's show you what happened just moments ago. Watch the short left hand against the uppercut. Yeah, Villa trying to get position. He blocks the shot right there. And he steps back and he looks for the uppercut. But what happens? He gets caught with the straight left hand from Navarrete. Villa drops the opposite hand. This is boxing one-on-one. -on -one. You drop the opposite Second hand up. when you're throwing a shot, throwing the uppercut from a little. So why not shoot a body shot when you're down there? Oh! oh! There's that left lead uppercut, and the knockdown is scored! Six, seven. Never saw it. Eight. His signature Five. punch, Five. and he cashes Five. in. So hard to defend against. The uppercut right up the middle. You think that you covered up. You think that you have your guards up, and he splits it with the beautiful uppercut as Diaz tried to move out to get away from his attack. But it was that feint. It was the feint with the right hand. He looked as if he wanted to throw it. Diaz expect that right there. Mm. Diaz covered up with the left hand, and he never saw Take the left up. uppercut getting through. It was the feint that set that shot up. Diaz has to take those steps forward, and he does. <laughs> Uppercut in the midst of it, and he goes down again. Beautiful combination from Navarrete. Straight back goes Diaz, and coming forward like a freight train comes Navarrete. Second knockdown score of this eighth round. Bloodied, battered, damaged is Diaz. Navarrete closing in on defending his title, and Diaz on wobbly legs. How much can you possibly take and still be giving? Oh, Navarrete's damaging him badly. Damaging him so badly. That's it, fellas. Gotta to go be anymore. it. We don't need to go anymore. That's it. He That's just ragged on him. It's good. over. They're up on the apron. The fight is over. Unbelievable work by both guys. Sean Hart, Will, going down to the end of this round. You see Diaz takes a big punch right there. He's trying to give it all he got. He's trying to stay on his feet. Navarrete is just too strong coming from angles, different angles from the southpaw stance, the right-handed stance, and then down goes Diaz. Diaz gave everything that he had. You rarely see this in a boxing ring. You hear fighters talk about giving it everything they had. But until you put yourself in harm's way and risk getting knocked out or beat up, you haven't given everything that you have. Diaz did that. He came here to win a championship. Sometimes you don't leave with the championship. You don't leave with the victory, but you leave with your respect, and Diaz did that tonight. Pedro Navarrete had a sense of urgency in the corner telling him, look, I need you to have a sense of urgency because this fight is getting away from you. <laughs> and how quickly things can change. And it's over. How quickly things can change. Emmanuel Navarrete, who looked like a fighter coming off a long layoff. Baez is doing what he's been doing, boxing well. Now that they just threw a right uppercut, just landed the perfect shot on the liver of Baez. Just a beautiful shot that fighters throw and work on all the time in the gym.
Look right at uppercut. The... He didn't see it coming. Boom. Didn't have a chance to brace or deflect the shot. Delayed reaction. He thought about it. He said, I need to go down. The referee counted right in front of Baez's face. He didn't have what it took to get up because that shot paralyzes that right side and it takes all the wind out of him.